Well, talking journalism and talking the quality and talking what exactly is supposed to be uh, done, the brutal facts about the profession. I'm with uh, Mr. Charles Ogwell here, who is the director of UMCAT. I know many of you have been trained right there. And uh, there's one particular aspect that continues to draw attention and conversation in the public. That is the quality of journalism. Uh, many will say we have so many armchair journalists who want to sit SC condition. They will not research, but they will come up to say. Some will speak about information that is not thoroughly researched, but above all, the training institutions cropping up each and every day. What kind of journalists are they, you know, churning out? It's a big challenge right now. Um, you have talked about the cropping training institutions mm. that are coming up every day. Yes. Yeah, true. That's where the quality issues are. Uh, I, uh, for us, who actually began all these dimensions of private training, mm. are feeling terribly sick. Because true, I would personally say that uh, UMCAT created uh, also the, the force for this kind of thing. Because mm. many of the video houses that have cropped up, most of them have been started by either our former students or our former lecturers. Mm. And um, starting a media house is not a cheap thing. You need a lot of investment to start a media house in order to, I mean a training media house, in order mm. to give the quality. But today, that's not there. And I must also fault the, um, the, the education okay. ministry. I must fault it. Um, you see, well, today we have this national diploma they are talking about. And the national diploma, as long as you have sat and sat, um, now that they call UBTEV, you still will be recognized regardless where you did the training. Mm. And it has led to so many institutions cropping up and uh, training students haphazardly and then Giving they theory in yes, practice. Yes, theory in practice. Then the students run to, uh, to register somewhere. And uh, at the end of the day, they have done a UBTEP paper. They are carrying a UBTEP document. But the quality in there is not. How okay. do you expect the ministry so to come in? I think, first of all, I want to tell you that uh, I was privy to be among the pioneer people who started the National Diploma in Journalism that we're talking about. Mm. And um, this program was hijacked before we concretized it. And um, we who started it are still sitting in the back and saying, oh, this is a problem of our country. We told you. Mm. Yes. We, told, we said we must start the thing, give the people, the architects of it time to pretest it. And then after they have pretested it, they How have did you want the pretesting to be done now, now that you talk about uh, it being hijacked? Our when we began it, that was around 2000, uh, I think 14 is when we started the, the whole idea. Mm. Uh, two zero, no, seven, I think. Um, we developed, because we were existing as private institutions. Now, at that time, when our students wanted to join Makere University, Makere would disturb them. That is not a government-recognized document. It's from mm. a, private, a private institution. Now they began to disturb. So we wrote proposals and we said, okay, we can now start a national diploma in journalism. Uh, myself, I introduced it to one of uh, the old musee called Luja Delet, mm. uh, who became our chairman. May he sold race in, in Tanopis. And um, we constituted the team and we saw funding. Victoria Mukasa, unfortunately, she has also died. Uh, led us to Freddie Kibat Foundation, who managed to fund the project. Mm. And we started that project and developed it. And we handed it to National Curriculum Development Center. Uh, Bita Mazire launched it then. In our setup then, Nash UNEV was the one to, to examine. We had uh, wanted to be even the ones to set the first questions, give them the but when the project was handed over to government, it went off our hands. Before we realized, there was now a team selected by another group of people. You know, as examination, uh, to set exams, invigilator, whatever, and so on. 
and that exam was a disaster. Because people who came in did not have a collaborated uh, idea on how this was to be done. Mm. And that has continued up to today. Well, I'm thankful that uh, even um, eventually when uh, Hubtev came in, after we protested, it still continued with the same mentality. But um, they are trying to work on it. But you see, we work, the problem that I complain about, mm. we do things haphazardly, and when it becomes, when we see mistakes and so on, then we begin working to correct mistakes, which is very expensive for the country. Why don't we be systematic? So uh, today, we have these private institutions that have come up, and that problem is there. And it's why we are leading people who are not properly trained. Which and is unfortunate, uh, and it costs is, the media houses yes, it costs where the media, they get to work. Uh, yeah, where they get to, to work. Now, that's why for us now, personally, uh, we have started an outfit that we call Media Responsibility and Accountability Initiative, hmm. MRI. We are now working on to issues of ethics. That, okay, you go for your training and so on, but with us, we want now to, to package you to be ethical, to be responsible and accountable. Hmm. The and, soft uh, skill yes, bit the of soft it. Yes, the soft skill bit of it. We want now to skill you so that you go out there purposefully not just carrying a certificate, but you are going out there purposely and you have a skill to fulfill that purpose. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Charles. Well, talking brutal facts about the media industry, and I think I totally agree. The soft skill, the ethics, is what seems to be missing out in our profession. And I hope time will be able to tell that this will be able to get dissolved. Yeah, because things by then have moved. You cannot change it. Whether yeah. you like, you now just have to f sit back and say, so what can we do within this country? Yeah, you have to do to correct post things. Uh, yeah, postmortem <laughs> and so For everything, You yeah. cannot stop it. The world is now running it's so running fast very, with the social fast, media yeah. and so on. If anybody now. Now we were can talking start. about cropping up institutions, the next time we'll be talking about, you know, online yes, training. Yes, online training and so on. Yeah. And everybody has become a trainer. Yeah. You can see that today. People Two years have experience. created. I've created their own blogs and so on, and everybody is a teacher. You know. When you have not, be, you have not even carried research, it goes back to the issue of research. Yes, yes. How much have you researched? How much have you been? You don't even have yourself? the experience you to don't be have able the because experience. experience could be a backdrop, it could be yes. a basis, mm. but you don't even have it to be able to tell. You don't have it. Yeah. But somebody is there sitting and. Uh, Being these a young people here, of course, they know, for them they know co completely nothing. They now they are relying on this fellow who is haphazard. Now what he has to them is uh, a professorial material. But for you, who knows? You say, now what is this concern? <laughs> Visit the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store to download the Afro Mobile app.